Hello again, lovely listeners. This is Tony from Refinement, Not Retirement, the podcast that advocates refining your life over retiring from it. Today's episode is Pickleball Part 2. Now, in Part 1, the previous episode, Christine and I chatted about the fantastic sport of pickleball, which has been a such a brilliant refinement to our lives. We talked about how we discovered it and how our lives have been so enhanced by it in so very many ways. Now, you, those of you who are watching by video will notice that Christine doesn't look like Christine today. She's not with me. Instead, I'm joined by a very special guest and a dear old friend, Karen Mitchell, who is actually a founding director and leader of Pickleball England, which is, uh, what would you describe it as, Karen, our governing association? Uh, We're hoping to be the national governing body once we get recognition by Sport England. Well, you know I've said to you many times how impressed I am at what you've achieved because when I came into pickleball and maybe it was the same for you but when I came into it it was you know sort of organization of the sport was a little bit lacking uh it was a bit like the wild west and you've taken all that chaos and sort of you and I know your co-founding director Frank another great friend um uh, have sort of taken all this chaos and brought it into order and that's just it's just been so great for the sport you know so thank Thank you for everything you've done it's just it's just amazing the first thing I want to hear because in Christine and I you I know you've I've discussed our story with you but how we discovered this sort of uh, sport with the quirky name (laughs) um how we discovered it and how we got into it but I I don't know how you did and you and your your husband Chris I just don't know how you got involved so can you just share that with us Sure. I was putting my dustbins out one day and my neighbours, uh, Margaret and uh, her husband, were walking up to the village hall in tracksuit bottoms and they were looking very sporty, but they're in their 70s. So I said, where are you going looking all sporty? And they said, we're playing pickleball in the village hall. And I said, pickle what? And the rest is history. So this would have been about March 2015, and it was before I'd even met Chris, actually. Oh. Um, so um, uh, my husband had died uh, back in January of 2014. I'd been traveling a bit, and I was just back home and sort of like trying to think about what the next stage of my life would entail. And I was talking about sort of starting my own business or, you know, g- continuing to go traveling or whatever. Anyway, I took up this sport Uh, one afternoon and it somehow connected with my inner child that I had forgotten about for so long and decided I would go back the following week they only played once a week from two till four and they had a tea break in between Uh, so a cup of tea and a slice of cake is always going to you know attract people to go back you know and um, I had great fun there I then met Chris in the September of 2015 and uh, he was at the tail end of his footballing career well he was at the end of his footballing career and he was talking about giving it up he was only playing with his mates really um and uh, he wanted something else to play so I said to him probably about the November time when I knew that we were getting a bit serious well why don't you try pickleball and he came over to the village hall was instantly good at it um and uh, he got hooked very quickly as well So that would have been the end of 2015. And then our first tournament was sometime in 2016. And that was when we found out that we weren't playing on a full-size court. Our village hall is a short court. And (laughs) we didn't even know. (laughs) So so you you were using sort of like the inner inner baseline, as it were, where you were the... Up no, it was literally a short court, and oh. even the non-volley search zone is is short as well. So Chris, you you know how tall Chris is, six foot yeah. two. He mm. had masses of advantage over in that uh, village hall, which you know when you go to a tournament, you realise he doesn't have in, in on yeah, a regulation size tour didn't have that advantage, right? So anyway, we had um, our um, reputations handed to us on a plate. Is eleven zero was the first game, I think. We progressively got better that day, but. You know that first tournament. Um, oh, shudder! <laughs> where where but, was where was that uh, tournament? Did that you... was Abingdon, the White Horse at Abingdon, okay, okay, uh, run yeah. by Stephen Susie. Um, right. And we made so many friends that day. Yeah. 
yeah you know yeah. um wendy and um oh forgive me i I could see her face, but I just can't think of her name for a moment. Wendy and her friend, they had a little picnic with them. And because we didn't know what to expect, we didn't even have anything with us. And the cafe was closed. They shared their sandwich with us. You know, they Mm. were just, everyone was just so friendly, welcoming. And that's when we realized how special Pickleball was. Yes. So um, our next tournament was then at Stratford. And uh, is that where we we met? I think that's where we met. Yeah, yeah. I think it was because we were yeah. talking on the last episode about that exactly. that first tournament. Yeah, yeah. yes. Um, and then we just enjoyed going around tournaments in Europe. We've been to the States. You know, yeah. what a lovely social, you know, game this is. And yes. lots of opportunities. Yes. Well, that's what we were stressing in our first uh, episode. Just It's not just the sport itself. You just meet such amazing people. I don't know. Mm. The, the sport seems to attract really friendly interesting helpful people Um, and also i think that because the sport um has friendly people giving those vibes out that then encourages other people to have the same approach yes you know um if you had people that uh were not as friendly then i don't think that the rolling stone gathering the momentum you know a friendliness would be the same no, it all started with that core group of people who were just so wonderful. Absolutely, and and you, um, before we get into pickleball England, which I'm excited to talk to you about, but you've actually put a pickleball court in your house, in our garden. Yes, in your garden, not actually <laughs> yes. in the house. <laughs> <laughs> it's gorgeous, actually. If you're yeah. ever down this way, you should uh, come along and uh, have a play on it. It really is lovely. I'd and, love to. um, you know, we do enjoy playing out there a lot. Uh, sadly, the weather in England is not mm. always, you know, what we'd like it to be. I mean, we'd have loved to have played this holiday weekend, uh, but we haven't got out there at all. So, um, but we do make hay when the sun shines. Yeah, um, but that's just a wonderful thing to have one in your in, in your own house. And yes, p- please, I would like to take you up on that invitation. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be down in. We'll be down for the tennis tournament. Maybe we could, uh, you know, in Eastbourne. Maybe we could. Yeah, uh, maybe you we should. Could, you should. We're uh, only about fifteen miles away. Well, that'd be absolutely tremendous. So, uh, yeah, I mean, because one of the things we also talked about on the first episode is that pickleball was invented as you know as an outdoor sport so yes. and and really here it because of the well one is because of the weather and two because of the lack of out, any outdoor facilities really um it has to be an indoor sport here doesn't it really largely it's largely an indoor sport but i do think that that is starting to change there's more outdoor courts marked up on tennis courts or specific pickleball courts emerging Um, I heard uh, just yesterday that uh, Preston Park Tennis Club in Brighton are going to be putting some pickable specific courts in just down the road from me. Um, And Imber Court have got a couple already. Uh, There's three in rugby. There's some um, in Hertfordshire. They're all over the place. But what is interesting is how many there are in back gardens as well. Really? Um, Yeah, there really are. I mean, I could name um a dozen or so that I'm aware of so uh you know and and I'm sure that that will grow as well but one court doesn't really grow a club right um so what we need is more courts grouped together so that clubs can be started it'll come you know if you think about it pickleball was invented in 1965 and it's only really in the last sort of 10 years in the States that all the courts have really been put in place. I mean, I was listening to a podcast the other day uh, that um, I think it was might have been Kyle Yates talking about the fact that they were taped up courts that they were playing on when he first started playing professionally uh, for pickleball. So, you know, we are benefiting from the fact that they've had a spurt of growth now because we might not have so long to wait for those courts to emerge over here well that would be absolutely brilliant because i do really love playing it outside i mean i love playing oh, inside nothing as better, well is but there? it's just Sun so in your nice face, little so bit of nice. breeze oh it yeah. is just wonderful yeah so that's a nice segue um perhaps into talking about the organization and uh, we'd because re- I, I again i don't really know where that came from suddenly you were just the queen of english <laughs> pickleball <laughs> and things what being organized you know it was just marvelous 
what happened but i don't i don't know that story how did how did that happen so things were a little bit um up in the air um there were a couple of groups that were trying to be uk pickleball um but they hadn't really got the followership of um players and pickleball scotland was starting to create pickleball scotland um and uh i was at a tournament in um, madrid in September of 2018, I think it was, and there were a number of players that were discussing the situation, and they said it it needs somebody that everyone trusts to start something in England, right? Um, and then suddenly they're all pointing at me, um, and um, I'm saying, well, I'm not doing it on my own, right? So um, I did take on board what they were saying, but interestingly, a few months earlier, I'd been introduced to Frank, Frank Arico. Now, Frank is the unsung hero of Pickleball England. He doesn't do stuff like this. He doesn't want to do stuff like this. But I tell you what, that man works so hard for Pickleball England. And um, if I had partnered with anyone else, I'm not sure that it would have been the success that it is. So, you know, kudos to Frank. He and I, we met um, we discussed whether or not we had the appetite to do something. We weren't sure. After the set, the um, the Madrid uh, discussion, I went back to him and said, "Look, I think people really want this. Are we going to do this or not?" You know. Um, now Frank gets a real kick out of developing software and and things like that. So um, he decided that he was going to go off and you know set our infrastructure up for our website and things like that and uh, he also has got a lot of experience with bylaws and all the rest of it so he took care of that and I took care of developing a marketing plan of how we could launch Pickleball England how we could talk to the, the clubs the players and all the rest of it and then we got back together again and we decided we were going to do it so we put the papers into company house and we went live on the 3rd of January 2019 and we were really blown away with how quickly players signed up for registration clubs signed up uh, for registration and now um, we're in May 2023 and uh, we've got over 4,300 members and we've got about 330 places to play on our club locator. So, you know, things have really been growing significantly. Well, it's absolutely phenomenal, as I've said, and uh, delighted to hear that about Frank. It doesn't surprise me. I mean, I, I played a lot of pickleball, pickleball with Frank, but I didn't know he had these hidden talents. Um, oh, it's, <laughs> Frank is so responsible for many things that have made us successful. So I'll give you an example. We have uh, two tournaments, the English Open and the English Nationals. I know you were there at the very inaugural um, English Open. Will you remember the scrolling screen of, of the games and all the rest of it and the efficient handling of the games? In fact, the registration with the the, the um, QR codes and, you know, all that technology, that's all Frank. And it's and it's you and it. It certainly was at the time unique because I said yes. to him at the time, I said, look, I've, I've been in international tournaments in the States and, you know, many, many places. In fact, I think one of the earlier ones I went to was the Madrid one that you mentioned. And if mm. I remember rightly, that was a mess. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, but and I said to Frank, this is absolutely phenomenal. You know, th that was Nottingham, wasn't it? That one? It was. Yeah. 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 Uh, I said to Frank, you know what you've Done, what you've achieved here is absolutely phenomenal because the, the one thing I've always loathed about um, international pickleball tournaments, I, I mean, I love going to them and playing in mm. them, but the one thing I loathe about them is all the sort of waiting around. I mean, you go, yeah. you go there and you wait for hours and hours and then you like play for 15 minutes and then you've got another two hour, three hour wait. But with that Nottingham thing that he organized with all that technology, I mean, you knew exactly when your, your next match was coming up. It, there was not a lot of waiting around at all. No. And I yeah. said, you know, this has got to, this has legs, this thing. I mean, <laughs> you know, I, and I can see that sort of being adopted. I don't know, has it been adopted, but has that sort of approach been adopted at other tournaments? Well, we've actually retained it for ourselves um, mm. because, you know, volunteering can become a full-time job. And in fact, in Frank and my case, it is a full-time job. Mm. Um, 
and uh, if you actually want to be able to give people the opportunity to use the software that becomes an extra job on top and we've decided that we've got too much on our plates to be able to help other um, organizers use that software it's it's good it's too much effort um, and actually the other thing is that software works right but yeah. actually what people don't understand is that there's an awful lot of work that goes into the scheduling of the games and Chris does that um, and, and Sam when he was working on the tournaments as well uh, you know the 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 effort to get that done we can just see that there would be an awful lot of hand holding for other tournaments and we just don't have the bandwidth it's not the the fact that we don't want to help other people we just don't have the bandwidth and we've got to be selfish and manage our time you know as it is frank and i work too late at night anyway i mean i'm sure that chris and i were working at midnight last night and we looked at the time and said we ought to go to bed mm. you know working on the english open so you know and that's not even until August. <laughs> well, that, that must idea. be a huge. Did you say you've got 800 members or p p players? In 800 that? players registered already um, last night. I had to do a posting to say that, you know, some events are closing off because they're full. Mm. Um, and uh, 800 was our original target number for the event. So we'll, we will definitely go over the 800. Uh, but, I mean, how exciting to have a tournament that big in Europe. That that is absolutely brilliant. So looking forward, I mean, what are your objectives for the organization? Organization, where do you see Pickleball England going? And uh, do you see perhaps uh, you could also include in your answer? You know, you've mentioned Pickleball Scotland. Is there a Pickleball Wales and uh, Pickleball? So Ireland? there isn't a Pickleball Wales at the moment. Mm. Um, I'm hopeful there will be. They're having their first festival this August, I think it is. Mm. Um, so you know. Some people are taking some tentative steps at organising um, an event. I'm hoping that they'll enjoy that and they might want to consider doing a pickleball Wales. But in the meantime, we're looking after them. They're on our club locator. Players can register. They can you know, attend all our events. Um, they have their own ladder league already, mm -hmm. the Dragons Ladder uh, right. League. Um, so, you know, there's an awful lot of pl great players in, in Wales, actually, and, and yes. uh, a lot of growth there as well. Um, where do we see Pickleball England going? Well, back in 20... So we, we we launched January 2019. We were joined by six regional directors um, at the AGM in August 2019. And then we had a planning meeting at the beginning of 2020. And we agreed a target. So remember, this is pre-COVID. We yeah. agreed a target of 25,000 members of, uh, by 2025. We felt like that was an audacious target at the time, um, uh, but we wanted to have something big to really, you know, go towards. Um, and I think that we still may make 25,000 by the end of 2025, even with COVID, uh, which I think is pretty phenomenal. We're a little bit behind where we wanted to be because we broke that target down by year, but we're only marginally behind where we wanted to be. So, you know, with a big push, I think we could get there by 2025, which, you know, again, is a, is, is an amazing number. That's great. Um, so we, we were talked about um, uh, out, outdoor facilities. I mean, d d do you have any sort of recommendations as to how um, places around the country can, could, could uh, establish outdoor facilities? Cause I've, I've been struggling with that and I'd really like to, you know, I'd really like to, because as we approach the summer, people don't really want to be inside a sports inside. hall, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and it would just be so good, but it there's, there just doesn't, you know, you can't seem to, I don't know whether you've been successful, but trying to get councils interested is, you know, jolly difficult. Yeah. So um, I think that that may be because we're not a recognized sport yet. Yeah. Um, we have submitted, so we passed our pre-application with Sport England and we have submitted our, formal application with Sport England they're now in the process of evaluating that hopefully we will be approved and then we'll be a recognized sport and then I'm hoping that that will open up some opportunities for contacts within councils and other sporting um, bodies so that we can actually develop a plan 
um, to reach out to all of the regions and see whether we can you know, create a bit of momentum. The other thing though, is that we're doing little pieces all around the country and we're seeing what works and what doesn't work. You know, we're doing some work with schools, we're doing, um, uh, tonight I'm doing a present, no, not tonight, tomorrow night, I'm doing a presentation to Parkinson's Society oh, because yeah. they've heard that um, pickleball can be beneficial to people with Parkinson's. So, you know, mm. lots of different things that we're doing that gives us some experience of working with different groups. And that includes, we've done some council letters, which some have been successful, some haven't been. We've done letters to tennis clubs, some have been successful, some haven't been. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we're sort of like getting a little bit of, you know, experience. We've had some discussions with investors who are looking at potentially putting pickleball courts in with um, padel courts, you know, so. Yes, um, oh, good, good. Lots and lots and lots of discussions. Hopefully, many of them will turn into something. But I've noticed that there's a long lead time for any of them, right? Yes. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's such a shame that there isn't a little bit more vision amongst local authorities, because because we know that pickleball, you, I mean, I, I it's fantastic hearing about that um, initiative with Parkinson's. We know, you know, that we know that the, the government wants the, the older people to you know, stay healthy keep away from hospitals and you know as much as possible we all want that yeah. this is this is fabulous for that yeah i mean i think you know i i before i got into pickleball i played a lot of tennis and and uh you know i i, I suffered from injuries a lot a lot of people were suffering because it is a much more physical sport you know uh, tennis is mm. um pick, pickleball is much easier to pick up and it's a way for older people um, who you know maybe coming out of their tennis or badminton um, careers as it were it's a way for them to pick something up quite quickly and get a lot of enjoyment out of it and keep mobile which we all you know we absolutely have to do absolutely and yeah. as you know um we we discovered the sport because we lived in naples in florida which has become i call it the wimbledon of, of <laughs> uh, global pickleball there but when we were there you know this little this little council tennis site called uh, East Naples Community Park, um, there was just tennis courts there. And, and you know, I think you know, people, as you were saying earlier, pe people sort of put lines down and started doing pickleball, but it was, you know, not really taken very seriously. And I think, I don't know if you know Jim Ludwig. Um, yes. But, uh, I think he was at the, yes. at the Stratford one as well. But, you know, he was telling me about how that started and, it was really because the local authority got behind it. The council yeah. got behind it and they put money into it. And you don't actually need a lot of money. You're mentioning paddle tennis. They have a lot more infrastructure, don't they, than a yes. football course, much, much less expensive. to play. Yes. Um, and they, they got behind it. And as a result of that, uh, not only are there, you know, thousands of people playing every day at that park, but it hosts the biggest pickleball tournament annually the US, in, Open, yeah. in the US Open there and the revenue it brings in that was the bit that I was leading up to in a rather long-winded mm. way the revenue <laughs> that comes in to it for the area is it's phenomenal is, is phenomenal I mean they have you know they have tens of thousands of spectators apart from the three thousand pound uh, three thousand um participants nearly yeah. I think it is or maybe more than that now but it's done it's done such a fantastic thing for the economy now you know i just want to go around and tell that story to the local authorities everywhere i can because it you know it's it's a great economic engine as well as a great engine for fitness and it is social yeah. cohesion and all that and you know we're starting to get um some momentum on the event side that we can start to give um, councils some data because you know everything's all about data um, until people see yes. um, the numbers they don't really believe it and so we had to uh, build the numbers um, uh, and and you know Pickleball England's um, uh, um, income or sorry uh, uh, yeah income um, yeah. on the events has really grown 
um, exponentially. Uh, I don't really want to go into numbers on, on the podcast, but, sure. you know, seriously, the numbers have increased significantly and uh, it will be even bigger this year. So um, we ha have started to build those numbers to be able to put into presentations. And in fact, you know, just looking at the English Open, we started to be able to uh, get some significant sponsorship interest because of the numbers that we've got. You have to build it from little acorns. It grows and grows. And then at some point it becomes the size that people are interested in it. And I think we're starting to get to that level, but it does take time. Of course it does. One thing that I, you know, enormous plug for, I want to make on Pickable England is the, is you've already mentioned it is the club locator, because that was a bit of a lifesaver for us. You know, as you know, we used to be involved in the running of wasps in, in Surrey and that was, you know, that was well supported and great. But when I came out into the, co we we moved out because of COVID. Really, that was the mm. that was the motivator. We moved out to the Cotswolds, um, and I wanted to continue. Christine and I both wanted to continue playing pickleball. Uh, and when we were all allowed out <laughs> to play again, <laughs> um, we were trying to we were trying to uh, get people. Um, interested in find somewhere that we could play because we try we it's a little bit like your original story of your village hall that you played at we we tried a demo in elmley castle that's the village we live in um we tried a demo in the village hall they've got a nice village hall modern mm. facility for a medieval village is quite unusual and uh but it it has no i don't know what you call it runoff and but you know behind the baseline yeah in yeah. pickable you need that don't you i yeah. mean you can't stand right on the baseline like you, you should can. come and see our village hall at some point <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, you know we tried it actually we you know we got some people in the village interested and they are now playing um it, you know two or three times a week which is great but we couldn't we couldn't um you know we couldn't do that there so you know and i couldn't find any anywhere that was within a reasonable i think we we drove to outdoor courts in bristol actually oh wow um, and we used to play there um, every week, long drive though, there and back. Mm. Um, and then I think that was a council facility and then there was some falling out or something and that didn't work out for, what, for, for whatever reason. But I kept looking at the pickleball locator and then eventually found this club, you know, 20 minutes of drive away in, in, in Winchcombe. Um, you know, and with it, yeah, it was it was just fantastic. You know, lovely, lovely group of people there, and we're you know we're we're very involved with that now. But that anyone go on, Sorry. you go, you the go. Club locator is another Frank. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Mr. Techie. He he's just yeah, Mr. Techie. Um, I call him the wizard. Actually, I, <laughs> I really is, I see wizard. him as the wizard behind the curtain. He <laughs> doesn't want to be seen. <laughs> you know, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great image. <laughs> yeah frank uh, yeah, it, on the club locator as well every time um we add some uh one on the club locator you know i'm often getting emails afterwards saying oh my god the number of people that i've got inquired about pickleball just from being on the club locator you know yes. so uh it's a terrific tool it really yes. is yes we're getting that you know we still get people wanting to play in surrey and we get now getting a few people in in the Cotswolds as well but it's fantastic so what would you what would you say um in, in two areas just qu quickly because we're coming to the end of our time but uh, what would you there's going to be a lot of people who listen to this podcast it's not a pickable podcast as you know uh who um you know is interested is, is going to be piqued by this and we're going to want to find out where the, what they can how, how they can start to play what would you say to the individuals first and then after that part two people who are wanting to perhaps form a club is that something you help with or you know you yeah. can give advice on so yeah. those two things Karen for those who want to find out more about pickleball go along to pickableengland.org um, and on that website we've got a club locator so just click to the club locator put in your postcode and uh, it, the club locator will serve up uh, clubs that are um, near to you and it will serve them up by, you know, shortest distance. But it'll tell you exactly what the distance is. So, you know, whether it's two miles or 10 miles, it will tell you what that distance is. You can actually um, uh, choose to have the nearest 10, 15, 20, whatever number you want. So you can direct that. Um, 
If you want to um, go along to a taster session, the best place to find out about taster sessions, I think, is on uh, Pickable England group. Uh, people are posting about taster sessions there. Or is, that a, just is that a Facebook group? Is that a Facebook? Yes, it's yeah, a Facebook okay, group. right. Mm -hmm. Or contact a club leader and ask them if they're doing a, a taster session, um, because taster sessions are where they take the time to to show multiple people how to play at the same time, and they're a lot of fun. They really are. Yes. Um, if you think that you would like to start your own club, then there's a, a link on. Uh, the website which is starting your own club um, and there's a lot of useful information there but I also respond to every single email that comes into info at pickable.org uh, sorry pickableengland.org um, and if you've got queries about starting a club or um, wanting to get a little bit of coaching on how to start a club then feel free to reach out to me we've got a pickable leaders certification program that we introduced I think it was early last year. Uh, actually, no, it might have been 2021. And several hundred people have gone through that now. Elaine Shellcross, she developed that program, delivered the first few, but now there are many tutors around the country giving it. And that gives people enough information and some experience of teaching the game to feel confident about starting their own club. That's the whole objective Brilliant. of uh, the Pickable Leader Certification. That is absolutely fantastic. Well. Karen, I'm so pleased that you agreed to do this uh, podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and it's just it's just great to hear about uh, what, what you're doing. Thank you. My and thank pleasure. you for your leadership. And thank you to Frank, because I know if I don't say it, you're going to say it. Well, <laughs> I am going to I'm going to I'm going to <laughs> thank tell you him to that Frank. I'm going to tell him he's got to listen to this because I've sung his praises today. So. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you have. And they're well deserved. But you, your praises also need to be sung. Um, and I'm, you know, so, just so impressed by what you've done. So thank you. Thank you. So um, to our listeners, uh, you can find out more by going to our Facebook page for the podcast, Refinement Not Retirement. Uh, we also have a companion blog where uh, I'll be writing up about Pickleball so that you can get uh, even more information. So please do uh, reach out to us. And um, uh, I hope, I hope, I hope uh, that you will try this sport because I think it's going to change your life. Uh, but for now, um, that's all uh, for this uh, episode. And it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Tony.